well, I did such a good job, or had such a great result of flattening the door cards after wetting them, that I'm actually redoing the first one just because I didn't flatten the whole thing. I flattened the center section, and now I'm thinking, hey, I can get the whole thing absolutely true. And then the second one, which I thought was awesome, now you compare it to the first one that was terrible, and I think it doesn't look as good, so I got them both going on here. And since I, I've got a little bit of a trip coming up for the next five days, I thought, get this done, get these things sitting here, let them dry thoroughly in the house, and then when I come back in the middle of next week, um, I can, uh, you know, finish off the door cards and get them painted. Uh, they look, um, hopefully they'll look absolutely straight and true. I got all the holes punched and everything else, so they will be uh, ready to go. Okay, we're ready to start this up. Cold start, let's have a look at it. We got um, ah, for parameters here. Uh, okay, you can see the engine's cold at 71 degrees Fahrenheit. Rad's just under 70. Bowl temperature 70. So we're gonna go on get the computer here. We're gonna fire this thing up when it's cold. The thing I want you to watch for in the bottom right-hand corner is the um, uh, basically the um, air fuel ratio. I've leaned this thing out a lot because um, you know a small four-cylinder engine takes a lot less, especially I guess a highly tuned one takes a lot less fuel. So two pounds per hour at idle versus um, you know for an engine like a regular V8 might be 12, 8 to 16 pounds per hour. So just down at two when it idles once it's warm, you can see it's trying to start. Uh, at 7.6 for cold start and then it's going to drop. Um, it says the target air fuel ratio is 12.3 to 1. That's because it's cold and it should change its target and try to warm up very quickly. So um, we'll fire it up. I'll show you how I've leaned this thing out a lot and uh, I've also established the timing at 20 degrees rather than 15. So it cranks at 15 and it immediately starts to 20 and this is because I've got such a uh, radical cam it needs a bit more timing at idle. So here we go. Ready? I'm going to fire it up. So it's uh, waiting for the fuel. Uh, uh, there we are. So it's running a bit rich. Now it's uh, leaning out, and uh, it's going to start climbing up. So I've got 1,400 RPM as the uh, uh, target when it's cold. And uh, the reason why the timing is moving around is I um, I do have it set for using um, idle stabilization with the timing. So it's trying to figure this out. You can see the uh, idle air control valve is, is at, started at 70 and it's dropping. As the engine warms up, it's going to be uh, trying to uh, lean out and, uh, and lower the RPM as well. So you'll, 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 you'll see this thing changing over time. On the screen over here, you'll see it's hunting around, looking um, at the different cells. So it's it's currently around uh, 85 uh, kilopascals of pressure, and uh, that'll eventually drop down uh, to around 70 as it finds its uh, finds its uh, way home. I'll just change to a different table for a sec here. This is the um, idle speed. So you can see it starts at 1400 and then I have it dropping down uh, to 1025 as it warms up. Um, and um, in terms of air to fuel ratio, I start uh, you know, closer to 12 to 1 and then as it uh, warms up, it uh, comes up to 14 to 1 at idle. And then uh, at part throttle, it's at 14.7. And at full throttle, it's at 12.8 is how I put that set. So if I go into the um, target air fuel ratios here, um, you can see at the top here, 12.8 is when it's wide open. And then down in the idle area, it's, it, it trends down to 14. And then over here at part throttle, um, it's at 14.7, then it blends down to 12.8. So that's kind of how I got this thing set right now. I'll go back to the base fuel. Uh, and you see it's now come down to the mid-70s. 
And uh, let's go back to this one here. So you can see the idle's dropping. It's about 12.50 right now. Idle control valve is um, is dropped to under 25%, and um, we're, uh, we're we're sort of getting stable on on several fronts here. So the engine temperatures come up to almost 130 Fahrenheit, and um, you can see it's starting to uh, get in range. And the fuel flow is only two and a half pounds per hour, and um, oil pressure is looking good. Obviously, battery voltage is great. I have a racing alternator, and I've got a, um, a two and a half to one um, alternator reduction pulley on it, just because with the engine speed potentially above 8,000 RPM, you don't want to over rev the alternator. Most alternators are aren't capable of more than about 25,000 RPM, some, some of them less than 20. So I've got mine set at uh, two and a half to one ratio and uh, it keeps the battery voltage up and it keeps charging. Like right now it shows I'm, I'm charging, five amps of charging um, and, at 1100 RPM. And as you, as you drop below 1000, uh, the alternator starts to drop out, unfortunately. By the way, when they, I turn this thing over and I hit the ignition on, um, I'll just turn it off for a second to show you. So I'll, I'll kill the motor. And then you can see how much current the starter motor takes on this. It should be about 150 amps. So there we go. Um, so we're, we're getting up into a good range. Uh, the engine's almost at uh, usable uh, RPM. That idle control uh, will drop down into the under 10% range when the engine's fully warmed up. And um, we will uh, end up with a, um, uh, like a pretty good idle of 1,025 actually. So I'm gonna flip the throttle for you a little bit here. So. So it's, it's very responsive, I mean, you gotta remember this cam doesn't produce power below 5,000 RPM. Now that's a relative term. This is gonna produce close to 240 horsepower without any nitrous um, at 7,000 to 8,000 RPM. Car's only gonna weigh about 1,800 pounds. You know, it's under 2,000 pounds. And that's gonna be quite a bit of power. And um, I've already got individual throttle bodies which are very, um, very sensitive throttle. And so it's nice having a bit of a lazy engine down low so that when you're in your part throttle, you're not uh, you know, killing yourself with, um, with a ton of uh, sensitivity. So not having a massive amount of torque down low, um, you can see even though this thing's down very low RPM, it's, uh, it's, it's got no trouble spinning that motor. Right? And that's not even getting up to the uh, RPM band where this thing likes to play. So, we're not going to have any trouble with this motor being, I think, controllable, at least I'm hopeful, and um, being um, in a position where we're uh, uh, enjoying the drivability. I'm, I'm very hopeful that even though this produces very little vacuum, it's going to be, uh, so you can see the ma manifold absolute pressure is around 6970 right now as it's getting up to operating temperature. And it's holding itself remarkably well down at, um, 1050 RPM I and mean, it's only it's only bearing about plus minus 25 RPM so it's not bad as I said if I drop the idle lower right now it still gets a little bit rougher I think I could probably get down into the nine something range but then I lose my battery voltage and my charging ability so I'm gonna have to sort of live with this so you know we're not quite at full operating temperature right now but um, you know it's uh, it's it's damn close, and you can see I'm only 2.3, 2.2 um, pounds per hour of fuel flow. Uh, so things really well behaved. You can see the CL comp. That's how much learning, or um, how much uh, tuning, interference tuning that the computer has to do to, to maintain um, idle. And you can see it's dialed in nicely right now. So that's my motor, and uh, you know at the back. This is not a great, um, not a great um, microphone on this camera, but 
can listen down here. It's a very quiet at the back, just a deep sort of throb, but not loud at all. If you're behind this car, you'd go, yeah, there's something going on, but it's not totally in your face at all. That's, that's the way I want it, right? Because if you look under the car here, what have I got going on? I've got a full racing exhaust system. You get a little bit of uh, quieting from the flex pipe. It acts like a little bit of a resonator. And then you're into the first resonator, into the second resonator, and then the Borel exhaust at the back is basically just a big resonator as well. There's no baffles anywhere. So I'm damn happy. Now, the engine's got a bit of a mechanical sound to it. Um, just because um, you're hearing the ITVs, right? They tend to have a, I'll blip the throttle here. You tend to, you tend to get a bit of a sound from, from opening these things up. So, you won't hear much of that when uh, this car is uh, on the street because I do have those um, ITPs wrapped in a, uh, oh, I got a bit of uh, oil out of that. Um, so a bit of, um, you know, a bit of a breather system or an air intake system that's gonna quiet that stuff down. So anyway, there you go.